Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we are doing a rather big job on how to replace a clutch in a front wheel drive vehicle. Now the vehicle I'm showcasing today is a 2012 Chevrolet Sonic. However, I've made this more of a general guide for pretty much every make and model that has a front wheel drive uh, front engine configuration. So I'm going to be calling out sizes throughout the video, uh, but they might be different for you as I say. Um, other than that, all I have to say is you're going to need gloves, and if you don't like gloves, that's just whatever, uh, and you're going to need some eye protection here. You're also going to need a respirator or a face mask or something that's rated to handle asbestos because clutch dust is made of asbestos and you don't want to bring breathe that in. Um, other than that, there's really nothing much more to it than a plethora of different tools and sizes as I list in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, like in any major repair, is remove the negative battery terminal cable. And with this specific repair, we're going to need to remove the battery totally. You always take the negative terminal off first. I know some people kind of get that confused, but you take the negative off first and then the positive. And then when you're replacing the battery, you put the positive on first and the negative on second. There we go. Okay, so the battery strap is held in with a 13 millimeter bolt. I'm working on a 2012 Chevrolet Sonic. Yours might be different, but in this instance, it's a 13 millimeter. So with the battery strap or battery securing device out of the way and both of the cables removed, like I said earlier, we can remove the battery. So the next thing we need to do is unplug the ECM because it's attached to our battery cradle here. So we got kind of kind of lucky on that. So you got to flick this safety up. Okay, so you flick this red safety up here and then you push down on this top part to come up like that. Make sure this extends fully up and it becomes unplugged. Just like that. And you do that three times. Okay, now you can come back over here. So now we can remove the battery cradle. Make sure these three 13 millimeters. So the next thing we need to remove off the battery cradle is this amperage sensor. And it looks like yep, it just pulls straight out. So that's nice and easy. And then there's a little clamp that holds the negative wire to it down here. Okay, just broke it off, that's fine. Okay, so with that removed, we can now get the battery cradle out of the way. Okay, so the next thing we need to worry about is the shift linkage itself. Now, on this particular model, it looks like we'll be able to just get our nice long needle nose here and uh, kind of just pry it off a little bit. There we go, just like that. And see, it's kind of like a little ball joint there. And you just uh, force it off, so it's really easy. Okay, so we are continuing to remove the shift linkage here. And I've got a little hook tool, and I'm gonna pull back on this plastic fitting. It's spring-loaded to keep the shift linkage in place. So I pull that towards me uh, very slightly, just like that, and this should lift out. Just like that. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm removing all of these little electrical connector holders from around the transmission. I'm not going to show you each and every one because yours is going to probably be different unless you're working on a 2012 Chevrolet Sonic. But the basic gist of them is get underneath them and pry them up so it makes moving the transmission later easier. And there we go. Okay, so next I'm going to show you one electrical connector on the transmission. There can be up to three on a manual transmission like this, and you need to go around and unplug them. I'm going to show you how to do one, and then it's up to you to do the rest. So on this particular connector, it looks like you pull straight up on this gray safety here, on the back side of the connector, and then, and then just lift straight up like that. Actually, I pushed in on the side here as well. So I lifted up this gray connector, I pushed it on the side there and lifted it straight out. And that's what it looks like when you're done. Uh, there could be a few all over the transmission, so just look, look around. And if there's an electrical connector or something stuck to it, like one of these 
one of these little securing things for the wire, go ahead and remove that too, because we're gonna need to move the transmission later. So the next thing we need to worry about here is the hydraulic line that goes into the transmission. This is the clutch hydraulic line here. Now, if we just take this line off without stemming the flow, um, it'll just bleed all over everywhere and we'll make a big mess. So what I have here is uh, some vice grips here with some tubing overneath, over the teeth to protect our hydraulic line. And we're just gonna clamp that. Like this. Nice and gentle, but it will prevent the flow. So that's good, and now we can move on. Okay, so now we can remove the hydraulic line here. There's a little clip. It's kind of like a horseshoe clip, so we can keep one side pried off and then go for the other. Perfect. And there we go. Okay, so I took off the wheel. I'm not gonna show you how to do that. You should definitely know how to do that. If you don't, I have a great video on that. You can check that out here. Now, what you need to do, because there's no cotter pin like there used to be in the good old days, we have this. It's kind of just uh, chiseled in here, like this in the factory. So basically we, we need to get a punch, make sure you use a punch, not a screwdriver, and uh, hammer this up so we can get the, uh, the nut off here. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a 35 millimeter socket here to take off uh, this nut with my half inch impact gun. There we go. That's what it looks like. Next, we can turn all the way to the right. Just like that, so we can have more access to the back. So the next thing we need to do is remove this pinch bolt nut here that is a 15 millimeter for me, maybe different for you. There's a nut on the back side we need to hold. Like that. And there we go, that's what that looks like there. Okay, so uh, doing it the other way wasn't really working, so I've readjusted this way so I can put a lot more pressure on it. Once it's free, we can lift that back up a little bit. We're good. Okay, so we have the CV axle coming into this hub assembly here. Now, if you can't push it back relatively easily, like I can with one finger here, it might be rusted together. Now, this is a California car, so it doesn't really have any rust. But if you do live somewhere where it snows and there's rust as a problem, you get some WD-40, squirt it on in there. Put the nut back on to protect the threads. Grab a plastic hammer and hit it on back to kind of break it loose so it's easy to remove. Okay, so with the axle free moving like that, you can see that. We can pull this assembly out. <clears throat> Just like that. Let the axle hang for a sec. Okay, so here is where the CV axle connects into the transmission, just here. And you might be pulling on that and it's not coming loose, but that's because there's a little C-clip in there and you're gonna need a pry bar to kind of help it out. Just like that. And make sure you're ready for fluid coming out because this is when it's gonna happen. So I should mention at this juncture that lots of people drain their transmission fluids before they uh, remove the CV axle. I am not one of them because then you're just gonna have to fill it back up all the way. Now, when you remove your CV axle and you put it all back together, yay, you're done. No, you need to check the fluid again to make sure it's full because obviously you've lost some. Now we can remove the CV axle. It should just pull straight out. There we go. And lots comes out. There we go. That's what it looks like there. Okay, so at the top here, where the splines are, you can see the C-clamp we were fighting earlier, or C-clip, the C-clip we were fighting earlier. So that's what it looks like. That's what you're fighting against. Okay, so I am on the 
engine side of the car now. See most of the engines over here. Now, in order to get the power from the transmission over to this side of the car, you can see this shaft here, and there's an axle support bearing in here that ties the CV into it, the CV axle into it. So this is the one additional step you need to do in addition to what I've already shown you on the other side. And for me, this is a 13 millimeter, but it might be different for you. And you just gotta do that for all three of them here. Okay, so what you're looking at now is the torque mount for the bottom of the engine. So the engine is held in by two mounts at the top, and this controls fore and aft movement of the engine transmission combo due to torque forces. But we need to remove it in order to get our transmission out, or backwards enough to get to the clutch. So we can undo these three bolts and leave it, or what I'm gonna do is undo those three bolts and this one too to get this out of the way. These are an 18 millimeter for me. They might be different for you. Here with those four bolts removed, we can remove this torque mount. Okay, so the next thing I've noticed that's in the way of some bell housing bolts is the starter. So we're gonna need to remove this. Now we can remove the two bolts that hold it in place and then hang it somewhere with like a zip tie and we don't actually have to undo the wires. Don't let it hang by the wires, but we can leave it installed in the car. So it's just out of our way. Now here, I'm gonna show you how to do one and there's another there's another bolt on top of the starter. I can't really show you because, well, the starter's in the way. So, let's go ahead and do this one. So we can take this nut off here and remove this grounding wire. Set that aside, and then we need to take off this bolt here, which we're gonna need a deep well for. There we go, that's what that looks like. Okay, so we got an extension here that's basically the length of the starter to reach behind behind the starter. Sorry, it's all elbows and darkness, nothing I can do about that. And you just kind of stab up there until you get a hold of the top bolt. And I only broke it loose a teeny bit, and then I used my, you know, my fingers here to walk the bolt out. And that's what that looks like there. I took that from up top. There's only two holding it on. See that just there, perfect. And now we can grab a zip tie and zip tie the starter in place and don't leave it hanging by the wires. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you can see that I have zip tied the starter main body to this uh, piece of exhaust here, and it's very, very stable. Make sure it's nice and tight so it doesn't fall off and yank some of the wires off the starter. That would be a problem, so that is perfect. Okay, so now we can start focusing on the bell housing bolts that hold the transmission to the engine here. Uh, there's a couple different sizes, so I'll list them out as I'm going, and they might be different for you, so it's something you're going to have to trial and error, and that's okay. So this is an 18 millimeter here on these bigger ones. There we go. And that wasn't on very tight at all. So that makes things easy. There we go. And you can see that's a big sucker. That's a giant bolt. Good stuff. So the next ones I'm gonna focus on are these bottom three here. Um, there's a, these three are basically the same thing except this one is going in the other direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these three. And they're 15 millimeter for me. And there we go. There's three more bell housing bolts removed. Okay, so the next thing we've come across is this bolt nut combo here, and this is an inverted Torx size E14. And the nut on the other side is size of 15 millimeter. But it might be different for you. There we go. I'm gonna remove that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna focus on is we're gonna need to leave two of these big bolts in, but we can break them loose. So, but we need to leave them in, because if we start, if we undo everything, uh, the transmission and the engine will become independent of each other and uh, fall down a little bit and we'll have problems. We don't want that just yet. So we're gonna leave this one loose, but we're gonna leave it in, but break it loose. So that's really good enough. Cross from each other. Yeah, so leave this in, and then the other one on the other side, it'll have an adjoining pair. So, 
on the other side. The next thing we need to do is remove these top two bell housing bolts. The end of my pointer there, there's just one there, and the other one right here. So we need to remove both of those. And there's two. Okay, so way down there, my pointer's on the end of right there. That's perfect. Uh, that's the adjacent bolt I was talking about. So we're just going to loosen that one turn and leave it. Okay, so what we have here is an engine support cradle. These are available to rent at most auto parts stores, or you can buy them on Amazon. Link down below in the description. I picked this up for about 50 bucks or so, and it is worth every penny. It's fairly heavy duty. I'm enjoying it quite a lot. So what you want to do is make sure your feet are on the uh, rails here on the fender, on the top of the fender, and then you want to make sure these are nice and tight and fit perfectly, which mine are nice and tight and awesome. Since we're not doing anything with the front of the engine, uh, this is kind of superfluous. We're not going to be using that today, but here we're going to be using this. Now here is the uh, hook. It's a, basically an assembly hook when they lower the engine transmission into the vehicle during assembly. But here today, we're going to be using it to uh, kind of lower the back of the engine down. So that's what we're going to be feeding our chain through onto the hook assembly for our cradle. Okay, so now we can feed our chain through here. Just like that. And we want to make sure that the hook is kind of in a medium position so we have enough travel to go up and down. Because if you had it all the way backed out, it could fall out while you're working on it, which is not good. And then if you have it up too high, you won't be able to raise it any. So in a medium position like this is perfect. And then we just need to hook the chain on here. Just like that. So the next thing we need to do is put tension on this chain here to make it nice and taut. Now, if you couldn't feed your chain through that hook like we did, you can use a bolt and a nut together to hold the chain to it. And the reason we're doing this is because when we remove the transmission mount, the back of the engine is not gonna be supported with anything. So this is gonna ha hold the back of the engine for us. So make sure it's uh, nice and tight there. And yeah under some tension, so that's good. So you can see it no, has no slack. There's quite a lot of tension on there, so you know this is gonna hold the back of the engine for us. Now the back of the engine is supported, so we can remove this mount here that holds the transmission uh, to the back of these internal engine cradles. So these are three 15 millimeter bolts on top. I'm gonna remove them. There we go. And that's why you need the uh, cradle we showed you earlier. Okay, we can continue removing this part of the transmission mount now, it's kind of in a two-piece assembly here, so we need to remove this. And here we go. And that transmission mount comes out. So the next thing I'm going to do is lower the engine down a little bit so I have more clearance. There you go, looks pretty good. So the next thing I've grabbed here is my transmission jack because we don't want to remove that last, that last bell housing bolt and before the transmission is supported. There we go. Nice and supported. Now we can worry about that last bell housing bolt. Okay, so now we can remove our final bell housing bolt. So make sure it's supported. Don't cheap out. Rent the, in, rent the transmission jack. Just do it. There we go. Okay, at this juncture, I can start wiggling this back and forth. If it's not coming by hand, you can grab a little prying implement or something to kind of separate the transmission from the engine. Now, if it's really not coming apart, go ahead and look around again for another bolt you may have missed. So we can go ahead and wiggle this. Okay, and there you go. So I barely even touched it, the thing disjoined. So that's awesome, now we can move on. So I'm here on the front side of the car, you know, right side of the engine if you look at it straight on and I got my prying implement and I can kind of get it in there and wedge it apart on this side then go to the other side and we'll kind of walk that apart and just keep going from side to side walking the transmission back as I go okay so we ran into a bit of a roadblock and I'm kind of glad we did because this can happen in some cars 
We have the transmission dismated from the engine here, but there's not enough clearance to get it down. It's short by about maybe an inch, inch and a half. So you might be asking, what do you have to do? And sometimes you have to take the engine and transmission out together, but what we're gonna do next is loosen the engine cradle that holds it in the car, and maybe that'll give us enough clearance to get it out. Okay, so you just kinda kinda look around. They're gonna be different for every car on these uh, engine cradle support. This one's a 15 millimeter, might be different for you. I'm gonna show you how to remove one, and then once I've removed enough, I can show you kind of around which ones I've removed. So here we go. There's one. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, wow. The next thing we need to do is remove the engine cradle inside the car because the transmission does not have enough clearance. So we're gonna start by removing these three bolts on both sides. There's one on this side and one over here on the left. So we're gonna start with that and then we can move on to the other things we need to unbolt. So the next thing we need to unbolt is up here on the upper sway bar link because it's gonna be the easiest to get off right here. And that will allow more of the cradle to come free so that'll allow the sway bar to become free because it too is attached to the cradle. Next, we can come down here and undo these bolts and also this inverted Torx because this inverted Torx here is what the uh, steering rack is attached to. Now, when we remove the cradle, the steering rack can droop by itself. That's okay as long as we're removing these bolts. And these bolts, that inverted Torx, we remove that bolt so that's looking good. And then the steering, or not the steering link, there's a sway bar linkage up top on the other side that we already showed you on the passenger side. And then I think we're good. Okay, so what I've done here is gotten a ratchet strap, wrapped it around this very strong plastic support for the radiator. Because once we undo the engine cradle, the engine, or the radiator is really not going to have anything to support it. And you don't want it hanging by its own tubes. Uh, because they can be fragile. So I have this ratchet strap here to support it and it's hooked down there and it also comes up to hook right here on the hood latch. Uh, so I missed this accessory earlier so we need to remove this off of this uh, subframe here and go ahead and look around again in case there's some object like this on your subframe that may not be on the ones I'm showing you because your car may be a little bit different. This is a 13 millimeter for me. There we go. Now I can remove that and that's off the subframe. Now I can remove this sway bar, upper sway bar linkage here. It's an 18 millimeter deep well. There we go. Okay, remove these cradle bolts. They're 13 millimeter. Okay, and that looks like the final front uh, engine support here, at least on the front. We still got to do the back button. Okay, so I made it pointed out earlier, you might have to remove this. You, on mine, you don't. It's part of the suspension, so it holds the A-arm to uh, this cradle here, but it's going to come with it, so we don't really need to undo it. We need to undo this one that I loosened earlier, this big sucker, because this is what actually holds the cradle to the car. Look at this, that, is that bolt. Now see this one above the A-arm here, we're going to leave this one and its twin on the other side of the vehicle because these are going to be the final two that we remove because if you remove these prematurely, things going to fall on top of you and it's really heavy. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is unbolt these inverted torques that go into the steering rack uh, through the cradle here. Now what's interesting about my situation is it's actually a bolt nut combo. So there's an 18 millimeter bolt or nut on the top that the bolt goes into, so I gotta get a wrench on that. A little, little hard to see, so you're just gonna kinda take my word for it. Check out that bolt! Okay, the next thing we need to do is remove these, I don't know, maybe call them straps that connect the body to the cradle here. I think they're for stability. And they're 13 millimeter for me. And we can do both sides. Okay, so we have some exhaust hangers here that go over. I already removed this one here. I come down onto the cradle. So 
Rather than removing the exhaust, I think we can get away with just doing this like I did here and just pushing them off the mountings. The exhaust isn't going to fall off, it's bolted in place. Perfect. So now we come to the exciting part where we are releasing the two bolts that are holding the cradle to the car. Now since I'm one guy, I'm going to use the transmission jack here because the transmission is being held up by the engine, remember. And we're going to push it, put it underneath the cradle here to hold one side while we undo the bolt. And then while we're doing the other bolt, we have something to hold this side. Okay, so now I'm going to undo the bolt on this side of the cradle, the passenger side, while the transmission jack is holding it up. And there we go. Okay, before we undo this final bolt, go ahead and give it another look around and kind of jiggle it a little bit, make sure there's nothing holding it in. There's actually an intercooler hose bracket I missed that I had to remove, so even I missed stuff, so go ahead and do that right now. Once you've done that, now we can remove the final bolt. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove this bolt here. And I'm gonna have to support it while I do it because the gradle's gonna come down. Okay, now it's at this juncture. I'm gonna have somebody help me out and release the transmission jack while I hold this side. Kind of jiggle and wiggle it as it comes down. There we go. There it goes. Nice and easy, and now I can go set it on the shop floor. Okay, so here we have the transmission made into the engine with only those two adjacent belts that are bolts that I showed you earlier. This is the time to look around and do a triple quadruple check to make sure there's no lines, there's no electrical, there's nothing in the way inhibiting this from coming down. This is the time to look and double check your work to make sure you won't have a boo-boo later because we don't like boo-boos. They're tough to clean up. Okay, so now we are raising our transmission jack to the transmission here. I have it mounted this way. So that way I can control the aft motion uh, so I can mate it to the engine later. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So I have the chain from over here mounting over, over top crossways on the transmission over here to this wing nut so I can screw it in and have it secured. And I also want to go over that I have a block of wood on the flat part here on the transmission jack because it's a little funny shape and you're going to have to kind of tailor make uh, something, you know, some people have a lot of Delrin laying around. Delrin will work. So the manufacturing plastic's really cool. I'm just using wood because that's what I got laying around. Uh, and make sure you're using this chain and make sure it is nice and tight before we let it down. So now we can move on to removing the two adjacent bolts we left in to hold the transmission to the engine. And they're 18 millimeter for me in case you forgot. So the bolt on the other side, the adjacent bolt, the twin to this one we were doing earlier, I've already removed that. It's kind of just elbows in darkness. So I didn't show it on camera. But this one I can show it's very easy. And this is the final bolt. It's very exciting. So what you want to do at this point is walk the transmission backwards a little bit just so the input shaft clears, which it hasn't done just yet because we can lower it down a little bit. So it's, it's kind of like a dance. You gotta lower it a little bit, move it back a little bit, lower it a little bit, move it back a little bit, lower it down a little bit. There we go. And the, the input shaft has cleared. I'm ready to lower it completely down. Okay, so from this point forward, you're going to want to use a mask or a respirator of some sort because clutches are typically made out of asbestos, which is obviously poisonous to humans, and you don't want to breathe that in.
So this is what your flywheel looks like when you've abused it. Uh, there's a crack here, there's a bunch of hot spots and just general wear and tear. This is exactly what a flywheel looks like when it needs to be taken off and thrown in the trash and a new one purchased. Okay, the next thing we can do is remove these uh, six Torx bolts here. If you're very curious, it is a TX55 size. Uh, again, there is asbestos, so make sure you're wearing a mask. I'm recording this narration separately. So I'm gonna show you how to remove one, and then we're going to remove all six, and then I will show walking the flywheel off. So with those six torxes out, we can remove it. Now if the flywheel is a little stuck on, we can get a prying implement and place it behind the flywheel to kind of walk it backward, just like that. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the rear main seal, goes around there. Now, I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you're doing this job and you might suspect your rear main seal is no good anymore, and you wanna invest in your car's future, here's a great way to do it. Do the rear main seal while you're at it. That's not what this video is about though, it's just a heads up and a tip. Okay, so you can see here, this is the back of the clutch disc we just removed, and you can see that the clutch material is basically all ground down to where these rivets are. These rivets are nice and shiny, which means that the uh, flywheel was grinding on them, which inhibits this clutch plate's ability to function. You can also see that the heat has turned the inside color here a lighter color than the outside, so that's a good indication that this was abused, and it's also flaking off the side. You can even hear it kind of crunch as I'm handling it. Uh, and the other side has not fared very well either. And there's also little tiny hairline cracks on the surface themselves. So that is what a clutch that is done looks like. All right, so my new flywheels come in. I had to order it from the Chevrolet dealership. It was super hard to track down and find. So when you're doing yours, make sure you have your VIN number readily available, so you order the correct flywheel the first time. You can unpackage it here. Okay, and what we need to do next is compare it here to our old one, making sure it has the same amount of uh, holes here for the bolts, making sure it has the same amount of hole he holes right here. These threads has the same number of prongs and is the same diameter, but this looks exactly the same, so it's ready to go back in the car. Okay, so we're ready to put the flywheel uh, back on to the rear, of the rear of the crankshaft here. Now before I get started, I wanna say that some flywheels go on one way. They can only go on one way, so you need to be extra careful and make sure there's no dowels sticking out or bolt patterns that inhibit which way it goes on. Mine is all symmetrical, so it looks like it just goes on any way you want. So redon your respirator and uh, let's put the flywheel back on. So I was actually a little wrong earlier about mine being symmetrical and gonna go on anyway. Uh, I rotated around and saw that this is pretty much the only way the bolts can go in. So if it doesn't go on, start turning this around without turning uh, the crankshaft and eventually all the holes will match up and that's the way it should go on. Whenever working with something like this, make sure you go in a star pattern. You can use a gun in a little bit and then use a torque wrench to make sure they're all correctly torqued. Okay, so I have my gun here on the low setting. You could do this with a, uh, with a hand ratchet as well. I'm going to be doing it very lightly with the gun uh, in a star pattern and then I'm going to go around with a torque wrench. Again. 
Perfect. So I have a helper holding the front of the engine for me with the breaker bar or the harmonic balancer so that doesn't spin, so the crankshaft doesn't spin while I try to torque these. I'm torquing mine to 65 foot-pounds. Uh, make sure you look yours up and torque it in a star pattern. Ah, there we go. That's the last one and we can move on. So the next thing we need to do is take some carburetor spray and clean the clutch flywheel mating surface. That's right here. You can see there's some manufacturer's grease or something on there. Uh, that needs to be grease free because if it's not, the clutch will grab extra hard, which we don't want. So we want this to have uh, some slip, so we need to be grease free. I know it's kind of the opposite of what you think it would do, but that's what happens. So you can see that there's something on there. So we need to clean it off. Another side note, little anecdote for you. Uh, this is an odd flywheel. See how it uh, moves? Really, in my experience, it really doesn't do that, but this is a dual mass flywheel, so that's normal. Okay, so now we can take a look at our new clutch disc here. Looks like this, we can compare it to our old one that's falling apart and crumbling in my hands. And we wanna make sure that they're identical. You know, same size, same basic construction, and the spline is the same, and this one is, so that's good. We can set this aside. And next, we can compare our flex plate. To make sure this is identical to our old one. Make sure it has the same amount of holes, it's the same diameter, it looks the same, and yeah, it's exactly the same. So we can go ahead and move on. The next thing we can do is use some carburetor spray and go around this mating surface um, because there has to be absolutely no oil or residue on this mating surface or when you put the car back together, it won't work properly, it'll grab too much. There we go, and that is super clean. And I also want to mention that make sure you don't get any kind of grease or oil uh, on the new clutch. So make sure you have uh, really clean hands, or I recommend gloves. Wear, wear gloves for this job, it's a good one. Okay, so we're here at the input shaft for the transmission, and what we're gonna do is take the uh, fatter side and put it towards it, and we're basically making sure the spline count is the same and it fits just like that because if it doesn't fit on here you have the wrong clutch okay so the next part is super important pay attention so you can see here there's a thicker side of the clutch we call that the fat side you want the fat side facing outward as if you put it on like this it ain't gonna work it needs to be this way fat side out so we can put that in there as we can for now uh, there is no clutch alignment tool for this particular vehicle. If your kit came with a clutch alignment tool, it's good to use it. But we're gonna have to do a little trick here uh, for this one, because they, they don't even make one. I called O'Reilly's and they don't even have it, so. Okay, now we can install the pressure plate here, making sure we get the alignment dowels and the uh, threads lined up right. And it's gonna hover a little bit. There's gonna be a little bit of a gap here. And we need to put at least two bolts in by hand. So the clutch doesn't slip out. There we go, that's pretty good. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing here is using an extension to try to find the center for the clutch because this vehicle does not have a clutch alignment tool. So I'm going to be moving this clutch around like I showed you earlier to do my best at centering it up. This is something you kind of eyeball and look at while you're doing it. Okay, so this next part is super important. This is where everybody gets it wrong. Uh, what we need to do is tighten the bolts that hold the pressure plate on in a star pattern and we need to tighten them a little bit at a time symmetrically and evenly. And as we do that, we'll see these fingers start to go in. So what I'm gonna do here, I have a little teeny tiny ratchet and I'm just gonna do a couple turns here Go over here, couple turns. Go over here, couple turns. And just keep doing this in a star pattern until it's nice and tight. 
It's like that. Do exactly that until it's nice and snug. Okay, so I've tightened them evenly, bit by bit, with the little teeny tiny ratchet. Um, they're about as far as I can go by hand, and I'm going to grab my torque wrench and torque it to the factory spec. Make sure you look that up. And you can have a helper hold the front of the engine for you. Because um, this thing will spin when you try to apply force onto it. Okay, so I have redone my respirator because all of this powder in here is asbestos and it's poisonous. So wear a respirator. Now the first thing we need to do is undo this retaining clip here with a pair of uh, needle nose. I take a couple of tries. It's connected to whatever this is back mm -hmm. here. Oh, I see. So you can see that this is loose now. And if you flip it over, you can see the retaining pin clip we need to remove. Okay, so this is the hydraulic fluid line connector. As you can see, it's loose. Uh, we need to remove this clip here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do while wearing a respirator is grab my T30 Torx to take out the uh, th uh, throwout bearing here. There we go. They're not in super tight. In fact, you can just break them loose and then get the rest out by hand. They're not in very tight. That's nice. There we go. And then, with those three removed, we can remove our throwout bearing. Okay, so I have the uh, throwout bearing and slave here. They're kind of an all-in-one unit. This is the new one, and we need to make sure it's identical to the old one, which it totally is. So we are ready to put this new unit back in the transmission. Okay, so now we can replace the slave cylinder throwout bearing. Exactly how we removed it. Nothing really to it. Make sure you've donned your respirator for this. I will have a link down in the description below for a very cost-effective respirator on Amazon uh, that has prime shipping. So who doesn't like that? That is absolutely essential for this repair. Make sure we tighten these uh, evenly. And remember, these weren't on super tight when we removed them. So they are a very low, low torque value. I'm not going to bother with the torque wrench. Just uh, medium tight is probably good. You can always tell kind of what a, a tightness should be by the size of the bolts. And these are pretty uh, pretty small bolts, so I'm only using what I would call wrist tight. Like that. That's perfect. Okay, so uh, with this hydraulic line here, we can remove this plastic protector piece. And we want to make sure this O-ring is on there because the whole thing seals with O-ring, so if that O-ring is not there, Stop what you're doing, look around for it, because if you don't have it on there, it's going to leak everywhere. Okay, so when replacing this uh, hydraulic line connector here, uh, my O-ring, this rubber piece on the end, was actually stuck down in there. I had to dig that out. So I'm just telling you guys now. I've also replaced the clip because in the factory, they just put these clips on and push on and it's ready to rock. So we're just going to emulate that. And these pieces have timers that go together pretty much one way like that. And then... It has a little slotted groove that goes in that way. So this should all just push together while holding the line from the other side in the bell housing. There we go. You hear that nice reassuring click? That means it is properly seated. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go around the mating surface between the transmission and the engine, this one here, and you can see there's a cable in our way. So this is when you double check to make sure nothing is on the mating surfaces. No wires, no cables, 
No nothing. This needs to be a metal to metal connection because if you pinch any kind of wire, then you have some big problems because it's going to ground something out, something might get ruined. So this is really important to take your time, go around two, three, four times to make sure there's nothing on the mating surface. Now we can replace our transmission. Okay, so I've adjusted the height of the transmission jack and the tilt of the transmission jack. So this plane and this plane are uh, parallel to each other at all points. So once you have that, you can start kind of, you know, uh, shimmying the transmission onto the engine there. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so this is something you're going to kind of have to manhandle back and forth to get it seated on there like this. So once we get it kind of within bolting distance, we can put some bolts in and really cinch it up. Okay, so what I've done here is put uh, the transmission on this dowel here, and I'm going to uh, put in a bolt because this is going to help me align it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it a little bit and then go across to the other side of the transmission and do an adjacent bolt. So I'm going to do this a couple turns and that's it. I'm going to go to the other side because again, this is kind of like the pressure plate where you want it to be put on evenly and kind of walked on there instead of one side really tight and then you do the other side. So that's the way we're going to do it. So this is our next adjacent bolt here. It's on the exact opposite side of the one we just did. So we can thread this in. And this one's a little bit shorter, so pay attention to your, where you uh, removed your bolts from and try to keep them as organized as best you can. So I'm going to be tightening this one and the other adjacent bolt a couple of threads at a time. So I'm going to go hit the other one right now. A couple threads there. Come back to this one. Couple threads here. So we're slowly walking the transmission back on to the engine. We're almost completely mated. We're very close. And the more time you take doing it, the better. Do not be in a hurry to do this job. This is a uh, weekend with a couple buddies job. And certainly not on something you have to get to work on Monday. There we go. That one's pretty good. And then we'll finish the other one I showed earlier. And they are both cinched completely up. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is replace all the bell housing bolts and tighten them. I'm not going to show you each and every one because I showed you how to remove them. Um, but yeah, basically we're just replacing all the bell housing bolts and tightening them up. There we go. Okay, so now that we have all the bell housing bolts back in place, we can remove the transmission jack. Uh, because it's bolted to the engine, it's not going anywhere. So we can undo our chain here. Okay, get the chain out of the way and it is ready to come off the transmission. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing we can do is replace our transmission mount here. Kind of put it in its home and then grab the bolts that go to it. They're a little bit uh, a little bit bigger here. So we can thread these on before we tighten them. Okay, so now we can tighten these up. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is gain access to our uh, engine cradle here uh, because we need to raise the engine transmission up so we can get the bolts back in for the transmission mount.
Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab this by the chain and push this uh, rearward while using my other hand to bring this mount. So that way the bolts line up. You might have to jiggle around the mount a little bit. Okay, so you didn't see any of that because I had to be where the camera is. Um, basically, you really need to manhandle this. Um, kind of in this rubber housing and shift it and push it along. It took some effort, so Don't get frustrated if these don't go in right away. So now we can tighten those up Okay, so now that the transmission, you know, the rear half is supported This is unnecessary so we can get rid of it Okay, so I'm underneath the car now. You can see me, hi. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is plugging in all the electrical connectors around the transmission. So they typically just push on like this. And they clip in place and you're good to go. So I showed you one. Now you gotta go around and make sure all those are connected. Okay, so the next thing we need to worry about is the hydraulic clutch line here. Now, I know what you're thinking, that you're gonna have to bleed this as soon as it's put back together. Untrue! This is a self-bleeding system, so once everything's back together and we hop on the driver's seat, we just need to uh, pump the clutch pedal a little bit. So, this is pretty easy, it just pushes back in. Just like that. It <laughs> couldn't be any easier. And I'm gonna get rid of my uh, vice grips here. That's that. So the next thing we need to do is replace the shift cables that we removed earlier. These are pretty simple, they just kind of snap into place here. Okay, so you snap this back down into its home, and then put this back on its ball mount there. we got to do the same thing for this one as well. Okay, here we go. That's the shift cables put back. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is replace the starter. And ours had a uh, ground on there, so we gotta replace that as well. So we're gonna tighten those up. Make sure you tighten the top one and the bottom one similarly, so it's not uh, on crooked when you're tightening it. And then once both of them are tight, we can replace this ground. So if you leave that ground off I just showed you, all kinds of odd things can happen electrically in the car. So it's important to put it on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is replace the CV axles. I'm going to show you how to do one, because the other side is exactly the same. Um, so we got to make sure the C-clip is intact, which this one is perfect. I'm just going to give it a nice wipe down with the rag before I install it, so there's no dirt. Because if there's dirt on there, it won't seal the leak, which is uh, no good. So when we put it back in, we got to be kind of firm with it because we got to seat that clip back in, basically. There we go. Okay, and then we can put this side of the CV back into the hub. <laughs> Like that. So the next thing we can do is put the axle nut on here. Once it's threaded, we can get our air gun. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is torque the axle nut. It's gonna be a big number, like 160 to 180 foot pounds. Uh, look up yours to be sure, but that's a good rule of thumb. And what I've done here is gotten a big pry bar. And I'm holding it here on the studs while I torque this. So that way, I can get an accurate reading. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is take a very good sized chisel, or punch here, and we're going to stake in the sides of the axle nut so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're gonna place the cradle here. Up anymore? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so I've got the cradle back up here, supported by the transmission jack. Uh, kind of an advantage if you're doing this on the ground because you could just kind of stack wood around, makes it a little easier. Um, but I'm going to replace this one. I'm gonna do all the bolts on the cradle by hand. Cinch those up by hand first before I tighten any of them. So I won't bore you with all those details, but that's what I'm doing here because there's really not much to it. Just put it in by hand, put them all in by hand, and then, you know, torque them down. Okay, so I just want to do a quick walk around and show you what the cradle looks like reinstalled. All the bolts I put back together. I went into pretty good detail when I was taking this apart. So when I took it apart, I went into a little more detail. Putting it back together is the exact same thing uh, in reverse here. I'm just giving you a little walk around to show you what it looks like and the bolts that went into putting it back together. There's still a plastic skid plate here I need to put back on, but this is what it looks like all nice and back together. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is add some transmission fluid. Now, if you have a dipstick or a fill port, you're in the clear, use those. But General Motors, in their infinite wisdom, decided not to include one in this car. So we're gonna have to be a little creative and take out this sensor right here, the big socket, and add it through the sensor hole. Okay, so now we can put this in there and then start pumping our transmission fluid until it comes out of that hole, kind of like a differential. Okay, it's starting to come out just a little bit so we know we're full. And now we can replace that sensor that we removed earlier. It wasn't on there super tight so don't, don't hulk tight it back on. This snug is good. That's perfect. And then we can replace the electrical connector. And there we go. Okay, so now we can replace the bottom half of the battery box that has the ECM attached to it. That just kind of sits in there and we can bolt that in place. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is plug the ECM back in. We're gonna do this before we put the battery in. So the way these go on is you push them like this, and as this arm starts to, act, starts to actuate, you can pull it down. There we go. And now we can replace the battery. And you replace, when you are replacing a battery, in general, Make sure the negative terminal is out and away so it doesn't accidentally touch. And then we can replace the positive terminal first. Where did it go? I mean, it had to be like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now we can replace the battery securing device. It's a little strap here. And then it has a bolt that secures into the battery cradle. Breaker bar or something. There we go. That's pretty good. Well, the next thing I'm gonna do, because this battery is in a little bit of rough shape, is uh, clean up the battery terminal just a little bit. First, okay, and then we can tighten this positive terminal up. It's a 10 millimeter, in case you forgot. It's okay, that was kind of the beginning of the video. And I'm quite sure this is gonna be a long one, but that's okay. There's no way around this not being a long job. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So when you're reattaching a negative battery terminal cable, you want to touch it and see if sparks come off because if it does, take it away because sparks can cause the battery to explode. Okay, we're good. Everything's perfect. And we can tighten this back on. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm down here at the clutch pedal. Now, there is no like bleeding procedure. The air bubbles kind of come out on their own. What we want to do is push down on the clutch slowly and let it come back up slowly. Not as, not as quite as slow as like you would do for a brake, but you want to do a kind of a rhythm until you get a clutch pedal, which I can already feel this one is coming back. And there we go. It is starting to get very firm, so I know the clutch is back. So at this juncture, we can sit in the driver's seat and put it into gear. If it cannot go into gear, uh, you messed up somewhere and it needs to come apart. But as you can hear, mine's going in all the gears, which is yay me. So if you can't go into gear, you messed up somewhere and it needs to come back apart. But if you can go into gear, job's all done. So that's how to replace a clutch in a front wheel drive front engine vehicle. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can visit our website, twocarpros.com, and ask a question there for absolutely free, and an expert will be along shortly to help you. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I'll see you next time.